click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study about vulcanizing agents. Vulcanizing agents help in the process of vulcanization of rubber. What exactly is vulcanization of rubber? It is making the rubber better than what it is. Rubber can be obtained from its natural form from the trees which is not very usable or does not have very high utility. And that's the reason why we vulcanize it using certain vulcanizing agents. In today's session we are going to study about what exactly are vulcanizing agents and what are the vulcanizing reactions which help us make the better form of rubber. Vulcanizing agents generally S, H2S, O2, Cl2 and other organic compounds like quinone, diazobenzene or benzyl peroxide etc are used as vulcanizing agents. The process of vulcanization started only with sulfur. So first we used to take rubber, we used to mix it with sulfur and let the properties of sulfur get into rubber and make sure that the properties of rubber are increased or enhanced. But nowadays we not only use sulfur but many other elements over here such as H2S, oxygen, chlorine. We also have some of the complex elements these are all my organic complexes like quinone diazobenzene what is diazobenzene azo group is n double bond n that is nitrogen with a double bond is my azo group but this diazo is with is a benzene that is the reason why it becomes an organic vulcanizing agent or benzoyl peroxide all of these are now used as vulcanizing agents Depending upon what kind of rubber we want, what quality of rubber we want, we can use the vulcanizing agents and get the properties imbibed in our rubber. The temperature range is normally 100 to 140 degrees Celsius at which the sulfur cross linkage are developed making rubber tough and resistant to the attacks of various chemicals. Now let me explain you what exactly happens. We take rubber in its natural form from the trees. Now what happens over here is this rubber has linear linkages. Now what is linear linkages? Straight line is linear. So all my rubber is in a straight line. Then I'll have a different straight line over here, a different straight line over here. So I'll have different linkages, all the linear linkages one above the other. These linkages are not crossed linked. When I say they are not crossed linked, that means there is no cross linkage or there is no bond between these two linear linkages. And because of that, this linkage and this linkage can easily move from one place to another. That makes the rubber a semi-liquid form. Liquids have a tendency to flow. And because of these linkages not being cross-linked to each other, they will easily flow or they will easily move from their place, from one place to another. This is not exactly a desirable property which we want in our rubber. And that is the reason why we vulcanize it. The main reason of vulcanization is when I have two linear linkages, I should have one cross link, at least one cross link between these linkages. And because of that cross link, these will not flow or these will not move, but at least remain in their form. Of course, we can stretch these linkages. We can move these linkages from one place to another. But when we leave them, they will come back to it, their original form or that original structure that was. And that is the desirable property of rubber. This cross linkages was started with the help of sulfur and now it has moved on to various other vulcanizing agents as well. Cross linkage is very easy when it comes to rubber. You just have to add sulfur to rubber and heat it at around 100 to 140 degrees Celsius and the sulfur would get imbibed within it and will make cross linkages between the two linear structures of the rubber. The process makes rubber mechanically strong and chemically resistant to the attack of common chemicals. Now natural rubber is not resistant to common chemicals. You add any chemical to it and it will take the properties of the chemical. And that's the reason why we have added sulfur to take the properties of sulfur and make it very strong. Again it gets both mechanical and chemical resistance. That means it becomes better physically as well as chemically. The process makes rubber mechanically strong and chemically resistant to attack of common chemicals. The vulcanization is also brought about using certain oxides such as ZNO, MgO, HgO, etc. This is zinc oxide, magnesium oxide, mercuric oxide, etc. So what happens over here is either we can use all these agents, sulfur, H2S, O2, Cl2 or we can use all the organic agents for example quinone, diazobenzene, benzoyl peroxide etc. Or if not that nowadays we have also started using certain oxides that is zinc oxide, magnesium oxide, mercury oxide and etc. 
let us exactly see the reactions to get a better view of it now let us see the reaction of it over here i have my monomer what are my monomers those are my normal rubber linkages so i have one linkage over here the other linkage over here and both the linkages do not have anything between them there is no cross linkage between them this is my straight unsaturated chain when i say unsaturated unsaturated generally has a double bond or a triple bond to it so because it is unsaturated i can see double bonds over here c double bond c c double bond c if you have a close look over here this chain and this chain are exactly same this is ch2 c with a ch2 over here double bond ch double bond ch ch2 dash ch2 dash now why do we have both the things as exactly same because both of them are rubbers we need to understand over here we're not mixing two monomers to get a different polymer no that is not the case over here the case over here is we are just taking two linkages over here and we are just putting a cross linkage between the two linkages in such a way that both the linkages will stay at their proper position and that is the reason why we have taken two linkages of natural rubber over here we have added excess of sulfur why excess of sulfur because if i have added excess of sulfur the sulfur which is needed for the cross linkages will go and stay at cross linkages the other sulfur will go and attach itself to the other linkages as well so i have excess of sulfur and now i have a saturated cross link structure what exactly happens over here is this double bond breaks this double bond also breaks so if this double bond also breaks what happens this carbon will have one bond of its own this carbon will also have one bond of its own that means this four carbon are having four valencies four carbons are needing to attach themselves to something because two double bonds have break the two double bonds each double bond in between two carbons that means if one breaks two carbon gets valency if another breaks another two carbons get valency and because of that all the four carbons need to attach themselves to something with whom will they attach sulfur and now i have this carbon this carbon over here forming a sulfur bond this carbon and this carbon over here forming a bond with the same sulfur now if you see the difference between my reactants and my products this reactant were my unsaturated chains which had double bonds and they had no bonds between them but my products are saturated chains they have no double bonds but they have a sulfur bond between them and because if this link and this link has two sulfur bonds or two sulfur linkages in the middle they will not move from one place to another and that will give a nice hardness and rise resistance to any physical or chemical attacks to the rubber. So here in today's session we studied what exactly is vulcanization of rubber. We studied different kinds of vulcanizing agents. We also studied when two linear linkages come together they form a cross bond and how they form a cross link linkage that is my vulcanized rubber. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.